time, you almost got, you almost got me there. Because you sort of, after your first little thing, then you sort of slow down and stop. And then it's like, no, 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 I want more, I want more, I'm not ready. And then you started playing again, which I'm glad I didn't get up and start making announcements. Uh, but So that was beautiful. And, and it was just, you know, the, the right amount. Uh, actually, you could do more. I, we could probably, and, and a lot of people would be happy <laughs> if you just played for an hour. Um, and then we would have Sarah sing in there, and I, I think everyone would be happy with that. Oh, we got a special today, uh, day today. Um, we have First Communion Day today. And uh, um, let me tell you a little bit of, uh, of my thought process as your pastor for First Communion. And, and uh, we will, hear me first, we will celebrate this together uh, when we can get together. We'll celebrate it uh, as a ceremony and recognize our three uh, um, people, um, uh, young men and women who uh, are, are going to be doing communion. But I would say, why, why should they wait? Because we, we do not know when that will come. We will not know, um, I do not know, when we'll be able to meet together. And, and I don't want our children to wait uh, for communion. They've already done uh, everything that they needed to do. Uh, Don Anderson has worked with them on Zoom. Um, and they're ready to go. And so uh, we're going to have, communion is going to look a little different today, uh, just so you know, and I'll remind you again, uh, they're going to receive communion first. Um, our three people, our three children are going to receive communion first. And then their parents are going to receive communion, and we're, they're going to do it at their homes. Um, we'll just uh, trust that they're, they're doing it there. And then and only then, and you'll see uh, Patty and Elodie and I consume uh, the meal, commune. Um, that's when we'll all commune together. So it's just exactly the same way we would do it if we were all at church. They would cons uh, commune first, then their uh, parents and family members, and then um, the rest of us. So we're going to do exactly the same way um, at home. Uh, Continue to, to look at our updates, continue to look at uh, the letters that we are sending out. We'll hear something from the governor, I think, uh, towards the end of this week, um, where we're headed. Um, again, we are, uh, I just got a, bishop, a letter from the bishop uh, yesterday, and actually a letter today, and he, he is adamant about following science. Um, I know what our president is saying, but uh, it may not be the best thing for us. And so we'll continue to follow um, science and what science is telling us. And uh, over and over again, you're hearing all sorts of stuff from uh, the CDC, but over and over and over again, they're talking about social distancing. They might change this, they might change that, but they're talking about wearing masks and social distancing. So we, we need to consider that uh, if, you know, and when uh, we, we open up the church again. So please read those letters that I'm sending out. I'm trying to give you as much information that I know, things that we are working in the church. So uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to call us, call me, um, and uh, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, so right now, let us uh, prepare our hearts and our minds to worship our God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious 
God. Lord, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is not just good news. This is great news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. house for all who worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord. For your spirit to guide, that you center our lives in the water and the word, that you nourish our souls with your body and blood, let us pray to the Lord.
listen to the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand, united with Christ and each other, suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know when the times or periods that the Father has sent by, by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, all in Judah and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who had been taken from up to heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. When they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. When they had entered the city, they went into a room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Martha Almeo and Matthew, James, son of Athadamus, and Simon the Zelot and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Today's reading is Psalm 68. Let God erase and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the salt solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom but the rebels shall live in desert places O oh god when you went forth before your people when you marched through the wilderness the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of god the god of sinai at the presence of god the god of israel you sent a bountiful rain O oh god you stored your inheritance when it languished your people found their home in it in your goodness O oh god you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel. Beloved, do not be surprised at the that fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice, insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are really, if you are reviled for him, for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, 
so that you may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. For you. Discipline yourself. Keep alert like a roaring lion. Your adversary and devil prowls under around look looking for someone to devour Re resist him steadfast in your faith for you know that your brothers and sisters in the in the world are undergoing the same kind of suffer kinds of suffering and and after you have suffered for a while the god the god of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in christ will himself restore support strengthen and establish you to him be the power forever and ever Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Wow, you know, I, I, I've only been here since September, and uh, I'm sitting here and watching uh, our First Communion children uh, read those pa uh, Bible passages, and, you know, my heart is just swelling up with uh, just pride and joy and, and just, like, wow. And, and I can't imagine what the parents are feeling right now in terms of, you know, seeing, because I, I don't I don't remember them when they were young and I don't remember them when they were preschoolers and, and stuff like that you know in in the earlier parts of our Sunday school um, program I just remember them as Chaz and, and Emma and Maggie and and they haven't changed that much since I've last seen them but boy oh boy I I, I, I can't imagine what your thoughts are going to and, and some of the teachers here that have seen them and going Wow, I had them as preschoolers, you know, in Sunday school. I had them in first grade, and, and I know that uh, Don, who who worked with them in their first communion, his heart is probably swelling right now. He's just, he might even be wiping a tear or two away from his eyes, going, "Wow, you know, this is." They were awesome, and and you know, those are those were some tough readings, and you guys did a great job on that, and and uh, uh, wow. Thank you so much for participating in, in, in our worship service. And, and uh, now you will always, I mean, you always can participate in it, but, but before I remember, you know, coming up here and, and, you know, you would come up here and I would have to bless you and, and because some of you were, you know, like this or I knew, you know, it's, it's not your time, but it's your time now. It's your time to share uh, the, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the real presence of Jesus Christ. And, and please don't ever, ever forget that. That's what you're consuming, the real presence. And through that, you know, we get uh, everything that we need from God. We get the strength from God. We get forgiveness from God. We get everything that we need at that particular time. So welcome to uh, communing with us uh, for the first time. Uh, gosh, I wish I had you here. Uh, I wish I had the children here because it's one of those things that I've seen a, a lot lately. I've seen people go, and I'm not quite sure what that means. And and uh, I, I, I wish you were, you know, sitting here with me, going, "Oh, Pastor Tom, that means this." So, you know, I'm, I'm looking over at my my helpers over here, and they're 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 all within uh, my age group, and I'm not sure if they would know what that means. Uh, maybe I should ask Sarah up there, but uh, Missy, I mean, any idea what that means? Mind blown. Mind blowing. Okay, and, and that makes sense because I, I see them go, 
you know, when something really neat happens. And, and I, I think after this gospel reading, we, we sort of need to do that because um, we continue to, to, to be in on this discussion. Uh, we, you know, you'll hear it in the sermon, but you, you, you have to understand that this passage that I'm going to read today is part of a story. And it's actually, if I ask you, and, and we've been doing reading on, um, on Zoom, so I hope you're, you're, you're listening to that. But it's like this passage is, is if I went to the back of the book and said, okay, you know, and just read the last page. That's what it would be like. You know, it's, you really need to know, and, 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 you know, maybe, you know, sometime this weekend or sometime this week, you and your parents will read, starting in John chapter 13. This is where that story begins. That's where this, you know, the, if, I, if, I, uh, if you're reading a book, that's where this story here, that's Jesus, with Jesus talking and instructing his disciples. John chapter 13, we're on John chapter 17, and we're almost at the end of it. And what he says is literally mind-blowing. What he says is literally something that we can't really comprehend, but we know it's really sort of cool. And so listen to these words. Listen to my sermon. Um, it, it's amazing what Jesus is saying to, to his Father, and which includes us, because he's asking his Father to that the love that they share together, he's asking his father to give to his the believers in Christ. And that's us. So this tremendous love that God the Father and God the Son are showing, we are able to experience that love also through them. And that's like mind blowing. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just, oh my goodness, it's, it's just amazing that we are able to share your love. We just ask that you just continue to pour your love down on us. Help us try to understand it. Help us learn to grow in it. Help us learn to accept it. Also help us learn to, to share it with others. Not to hoard your love. You, your love is unbelievable and it's enough for everyone. So help us in, in whatever way we can share it with others uh, to, to make sure your name is known. We ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the works that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made known your name to those whom you have gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. 
Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you have gave to me, I have given to them, and they received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. And that's almost to the end of this gospel. We're going to skip all the way to the last verse of this, this dialogue on chapter 17. And here it is. It's verse 26. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. What great news is that? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord our God. I, I, I really do think it's important to remember that Jesus started talking way back in chapter 13 in the Gospel of John. It started with the washing of the feet of the disciples, instructing them humbly that it is better to serve than to be served. An act of love, washing the disciples' feet, will end eventually with another act of love, dying on the cross for our sins. And here we find ourselves in the beginning of chapter 17, the final scene of Jesus and his speech. And all along, Jesus has been talking, instructing, and explaining to his disciples things that they would not fully understand until they received the Holy Spirit, which so happens to be in our liturgical calendar year next week. So if you're going to view this video, if you're going to come to our service, uh, will the people here, let's make sure we wear red because that is our color for the Holy Spirit coming. And in this passage, Jesus now, in this passage we read today, Jesus now turns his focus from the disciples to his heavenly Father. If this was a play, the light would be dimmed from the outside and all the guests, and then it would just be focused only on him. Verse 1 states, after Jesus has spoken these words to the disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. We continue to receive a glimpse of the love relationship between Jesus and his Father. We have seen it over the last couple of weeks as we go through the Gospel of John. And in this passage, more than any other passage in the Bible, we see this love shared by the Father and the Son. And here it is. You've heard me say it. You heard me say it in, in the children's past, uh, sermon. This is the best news ever known. That this love between God the Father and God the Son is also meant for us we too are able to share in this love. And because we're able to share in this love, we have the gift of eternal life with God so graciously gives. In verse 3 it says, And this is eternal life, that I may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you have gave me to do, so now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. How crazy. How radical is this God's love for us? Think about it. He sent his own son, put flesh on him, to live among us, to die for us, and to be raised up, overcoming death and overcoming sin. Jesus here is asking God to glorify him to his pre-existing presence, the presence before he came to earth, before the world existed. 
And Jesus prays to his Father, I have finished the work that you gave me to do. And going back from last week, we know what that work is. That work is to make known God's name. And because of God's love for us, because Jesus completed work on earth, because we now know God's name, we too can share eternal life with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in this passage, we get witness how Jesus prays to his Father. Jesus is looking up to his Father and praying to him. And this prayer is not a prayer of a dying man. This prayer is a, a boldness, an expectation, knowing that everything comes from the Father. And what he's doing is he's modeling what he, he said previously in verse 23 in chapter 16. Again, this is one complete dialogue. Very truly, he says in verse 23, I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Jesus is asking his Father to return him to glory. The glory that Jesus had before he came to our world. And he is praying like a person who knows that his Father listens and answers prayers. Which leads me to my first question that I have. Have you been praying lately? Are you praying with the same boldness and expectation that Jesus is modeling for us in this passage? And some of you might be saying, and I know, you know, if I, if I look at myself truthfully, I probably say this too. Oh, I, 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 I can't do that. It might be okay for the Son of God to pray like this, but for us humans, for me, I can't do that. But if you've been doing the psalm devotion with us as we've been working through the psalms here, you might come away impressed by the psalmist's boldness. Turn your ear toward me, God. Don't hide your face from me. Are you listening? Answer me quickly. The psalmist knew how to pray to God way before Jesus modeled this behavior for us. And I know personally I need to pray with a little bit more boldness and expectation. And in this prayer, Jesus is bold enough to hold God, his Father, to his Father's promises. And I think Jesus wants us to do the same. Jesus asked his Father to protect his disciples. But I think this prayer is also made for God's whole entire faith community today. Last week we were told that God would not leave us orphaned. Jesus would leave, but he will send the Holy Spirit to help us, to encourage us, to be our helper, to protect us. We know that the promised Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, but it also came on, we'll find out next week, it came upon the early believers. And it still comes today in our baptism. And Jesus' plea for protection is a timeless prayer. It applies to all people who came before us. It applies to us. And it also applies to the people who will come after. It belongs to the community of believers of Jesus Christ. But so is the love that they share. When we turn the page on chapter 17, Jesus is headed to the Garden of Gethsemane to his death on the cross. The final words of Jesus' dialogue before this happens, and that's why I needed to read it, is, I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love that which we share, the love that you have loved me with, and, and I will give them, and I in them. Can we sit here just for a minute to hear that again? I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. So that the love with which you have loved me may be in them. This love that the Apostle Paul will later describe as the love greatest of all, far better than hope and faith, because this love is eternal. 
When we go to heaven, we won't need faith or hope anymore, but the love of God will still be there. And this same love, this same love is the love that we now share with Jesus Christ. And not only that, but Jesus says, I will be in them also. You don't have to earn it. We don't have to work it for it. But because of our relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, Jesus' love is living inside of us. So whatever you're going through today, whatever fears and anxieties you face right now, they are real. They are real fears. They are real anxieties that you're going through. But Jesus' love for you is greater. I'm wondering if I'm the only one whose song, that song that we sang yes, last Sunday is still rattling in your head. I know it's rattling in mine. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Stand there. Stand in God's love for you. Amen. Please join us if you have a hymn note. If you don't, uh, just join if you know the words um, or just listen to the beautiful uh, music that Sarah and Pam are going to bless us with. 581, our hymn of the day, You Are Mine. Verse 1, 2, and 4.
final words, and I, I know God is saying that, I love you, and you are mine. But I wonder if we should be saying that too, to God. I love you, God. You are mine. I think it could go, should go both ways. Let's confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten and unmade, of a one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promise, hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God at all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel the love of your neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skills and riches are understanding. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. We ask that you help those who are helping others during this time. Bless those who are on the front lines, such as health care workers, police officers, and retail workers. Bless those who are helping care for our food supply the growers, the pickers, the packers, and the people who carry the food to our stores. We ask your divine protection over all. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayer. Yes. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Give courage to all who embark on your new ventures. We especially remember this day, those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Raise all your saints to the eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we give you thanks 
for those who celebrated a birthday this past week. We are grateful to be part of their life and ask your continued blessing upon Kathy Corder, Jessica Weber, Rachel Hunt, and Robbie Mallard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Living God, we also thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for blessing the wedding of Vince and Karen Kaspersky. Please continue to instill in them love for each other and love for you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our yeah. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We will be again transitioning now to the altar. Um, please, uh, at this time, listen to the music that Pam is going to be playing for you, but also uh, get your uh, communion meal ready, or if you're taking, having a snack with us, please get that ready by we also prepare this table. reminder as we go through this communion service uh, is that Chaz and Emma and Maggie are going to be communion first and then their family is going to communion second and then the rest of us are going to communion third. And so please make sure that everything is prepared, ready to go. And we'll continue on with our communion life. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins and who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with the angels and archangels and cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do, do this in memory of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Take your drink, your juice, whatever you have. This is the body of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. We ask the family, the family to step forward. Family and friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Juice, whatever you have, lift it up. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Now, everyone in one big community of our church, let's also participate in the community. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take, drink.
Chaz and Emma and, and Maggie because I get to say these words for the first time to you with the meaning of, of participating with communion with us. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. Halle, 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 Hallelujah. Halle, 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 Hallelujah. Halle, 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 Hallelujah. 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 One more time. Halle, 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 Hallelujah. Halle, Halle, Halle. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jeff and Lori. Let us pray. By giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened up to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please receive his blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the grave raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Sending song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. We are going to be singing verse 1, 2, and 4. It is number 656 in your hymnal. <laughs> great gift. We get to participate and share the love that Jesus and his Father share with each other. But don't hold it. Share it with others. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, Peter.